Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be exploring Minio buckets and how to work with them. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try and use some sort of client. So this could be uh, a curl command, this could be postman, or this could be just a bit of Python or Java code that you have where you want to access a bucket that you have in Minio and it could be uh, protected so that might require you to supply some sort of authentication or it may be just open so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just open up our web browser and we're just going to show we're going to show minio and we're going to show that at the minute we have one bucket and this is from a previous video so if you're kind of wondering how we got uh, minio up and running locally on our machine just take a look at that but we have this one bucket here and if we go into this bucket we can see that we have a test file and this test file is nothing special it's just a normal text file and it has this is a test file inside it so nothing too special but if we go and try and access this so let's pull up postman again this could be a curl command or this could be anything else you know a python application java application and so on so we want to try and hit this so this is localhost 9000 and um, it's 9000 because that's the api port number now if you look at the browser it is 9001 but the api itself is 9000 again that's the way we we set it up in the previous video then we have our bucket name which is bucket one you can see this is the name of our bucket and then we have test file uh, one two three so if we go into this bucket we can see the test file is called test file one two three uh, dot text so if we send a request uh, to try and get this we get an error message and the problem is the access is denied so we basically don't have um we don't have access to this file because we haven't provided any sort of authentication so to get around this what we could do is we could uh, not have this bucket uh, the way it currently is which is uh, private we could change it by going to our bucket we go to manage we change this from private to public we set this refresh you can see it's public now and if we go and hit this we will be able to see the file this is a test file but for many scenarios for security reasons you would not want your bucket to be totally public you would want some sort of um, authentication so we're going to change this back to private set it there refresh it's private so just to double check again if we go and hit this we get our access denied right so what do we do here to now get access to it so we need to go to our authentication and we are going to select the AWS signature and you can see for this AWS signature there's a couple of fields there's an access key there's a secret key and there's a service name and now these are the only three files we're concerned about when we use Minio and um, again if you're using AWS as an S3 storage you would have to put in things like the region but this is not needed for Minio. So this will be blank, but you'll need to put in S3 because that's what we're using. That's what Minio uses. Um, and then these access keys and service keys, um, these will depend on the access key and the service key that you have set up when you've created your, uh, when you've created Minio. So, for example, for me, when I spun up my Docker Minio image, 
I passed in two parameters. And those two parameters were access key and secret key, um, which we done in our previous video. And I'm just going to bring uh, this onto the screen so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I said Docker run, here are the ports, and this Minio root user, which is this string here. So you'll notice that the Minio root user is just another name for the access key. And the Minio root password is another name for the secret key. So these would just be copy and pasted. Now, if you were to follow along with my example, yours would be exactly the same. But again, obviously, if, if you've changed it to something, something different, then you would put whatever you have got in here. Once you've got all those set up, you should just be able to go and hit send. And now you can see the file. So you now have used authentication to get access to your S3 Minio bucket. And it's still secure to all other people that are on your network. So they'll not be able to get any access to your files unless they have the access key and the secret key along with the URL. So I hope you've gained something from this video. If you liked it, you know what to do.